uh, Kung Fu has been a major uh, part of a Chinese culture and I think this culture, even though it came from China, it belongs to the world, so it should be shared with everyone. Or people without Chinese background, they, they could learn from a different perspective. Wing Chun is a, is a very practical self-defense system, okay? First, you know, you develop self-defense skills. That's, that's the most important thing. It takes more time for our, our visual system to respond to an attack. So we want to learn how to cover, we want to make contact, then we respond with our tactile system. That's the reason we practice the second hand practice. I was uh, born in Hong Kong, and when I was in Hong Kong, I didn't really appreciate Chinese culture until I get here and then I start getting homesick. And then I realized that um, my heritage and my background is actually an advantage. I get to be more close to my uh, background and I understand more about being Chinese, what it means to me, and that it's something that I never thought I would learn from Wing Chun. Everyone here learns how to share, and that makes me realize that by sharing, we're actually learning a lot more, so yeah. <laughs> students will develop self-confidence because they, um, they, at least they would, when they walk on the street, they would not present themselves as victims. They walk on the street with confidence, they are more alert, they don't want to present, okay, well, if you walk on the street with less confident, people will attack you. So through training, through uh, the drills, the form, and uh, we practice teas out, the sticking hand practice, we emphasize relaxation. Uh, so we learn to respond with relaxation even we are under uh, stress or threats uh, in uh, their everyday living. If they get stressed out at work or they got frustrated uh, somehow and uh, at home, they, 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 they tend to be more relaxed and have a clearer mind to respond to, the, to a situation. When I took it seriously, I, I was at a time in my life where I was a little bit immature. Uh, when I was growing up, I did not have a strong connection with my Chinese heritage. So, when I was a little bit more mature, a little bit more growing up, I decided to learn something, you know, more about it. Helped me to bring out a lot of my own self-confidence. Uh, you know, attack their day-to-day lives, deal with stress. And so, what do you want them to learn from this thing? Like, like, what message do you want to bring to them? And probably, I would say, the next generation. I think we are we are living in a extreme, I mean, a world with extreme comments, extreme uh, point of views. So I would like to introduce Chinese philosophy through martial arts practice. So students will develop different um, way of thinking. They don't, they don't tend to be too extreme, think too extreme on one side. Always think about the other side, like yin and yang. I don't want to think about my practice or my point of view. I want to think about the other person's point of view. Okay, for example, he punched me home until Dato, I finish. I don't, I, maybe second match is coming, but I stop him already. So always keep that in mind. I don't want to see him fall. One, punch, two. Well, you may, but don't forget punch. Boom, you may finish already. Understand my point? Yes. So you expect two punches, two punches, go. Boom, boom. Was he able to throw a second punch? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You get my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, thank you. So you've studied, you've got a master from Harvard and you used to study movement science in Columbia University, you know, like all these big names, like what got you here, like, you know, opening up a martial place, like how did this start? Is this your passion, I would say? I've been uh, practicing martial arts since I was seven years old, so it's almost, uh, almost 40 years, I'm 46 uh, this year. So it's been my passion, but I've never, I just practiced uh, martial arts as my hobby since, since uh, I was a child. And I never thought about opening a martial arts school until I was in my 30s and uh, I was in working in a, a corporate world. And after I worked for a while, I just wanted to do something more meaningful. So I thought about what, sh what should I do? You know, it's like a midlife crisis. Okay, what should I do, you know, uh, in, in, in for my future? And then I just shoot, hey, maybe I should, you know, promote Chinese culture, promote martial arts culture. So my Sifu Wan Gama has been using practical Wing Chun as his uh, brand of uh, Wing Chun. Uh, it means practicality is our objective. 
So I saw videos where people, you know, they fight with the Wing Chun dummy and mm -hmm. they use, I know, you call it sword or knife? Yeah, but butterfly knife, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also uh, a fight between two persons. Like, can you tell mm -hmm. us the differences between like this tree? So in the beginning of training, people will learn an arm forms. Uh, as you see in class, uh, they practice a form called, first form is called Siu Ling Kao. It's an arm form. And then second form is called Tam Kyu. And third form is called Biu Ji. After students learn the forms, okay, and they learn the drills and learn the sticking hand practice, they will advance the, the level to wooden dummy, the Mok Yan Zhong, the Wu Ren Zhong uh, practice. So uh, the wooden dummy practice um, is about correcting students' uh, position, posture, and learn about distance and timing. And also, uh, it, it consists of uh, techniques from the three forms. So you, you, you learn how to mix the, th the major technique, the core techniques from the three forms together and practice on a wooden dump. So I picked that up because I saw the IP Man movies, like the community, I think it's very important. So like we're um, very close all here in, in the school. This concept of relaxation, um, that where, that's how you generate power. And, but also learning that relaxation has permeated to other parts of my life. They talk a lot about you know the uh, the, the the Chinese traditions such as uh, being respectful, uh, you know being humble, uh, you know ethical self conduct, uh, learn from each other. All right, this is the first uh, most basic form of Xiu uh, Ling Tao, which is Gao Cha Sao, Gao Cha Sao, Gao Cha Sao, Gao Cha Sao, Gao Cha Sao. We also have other forms such as Hoi Hap Hoi Hap Hoi. Well, they bow they, before they step on the mat because I want them to focus on their training when they come to class. I want them to forget about uh, their what happened in their everyday life when they come to practice. When they come to class, I want them to focus on strictly on training. If they don't get it right away, they got frustrated, they, they, they give up, they move on. I mean, I'm not saying all of them are doing it, but they tend to have that kind of mentality. So, me, I would like to introduce uh, Kung Fu and everything takes hard work and time. If with, they're, they're, I think they're smart, but they need hard work and time to develop wisdom. Good night. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.